done it not only once, I've been shot at a number of times in a number of places around the world, and every time God has miraculously saved my life. This is, this is God's Word. So John, it says not just John talking, it's not just the Holy Ghost yes. talking. God is talking. Eating up the stories that he would tell of his missions and ministry, and it would build my faith. So all of heaven is watching the earth all the time, looking for a man or a woman that's going to use the Word of God, that's going to speak the Word of God, that's going to move on the Word of God. And when they do, heaven moves. Welcome today to More Than Conquerors program. We are thrilled, as always, <laughs> to be here with you and to share the Word of God. You know, we have such an expectant anticipation that what we're going to say by the Spirit of God today is going to make a difference positively in your life. Terry and I rarely have notes or anything uh, that that we would have to follow specifically to talk to you because we want to leave room for the Spirit of the Lord to prompt us on certain things. And that has to do with who's listening. That always has to do sure. who, with who is going to be watching the program this particular moment. And so we want to be available to the Spirit of God to speak uh, impromptu, to speak in the moment uh, by the Holy Spirit to you. And we are so grateful you're watching today, or you, maybe you're just listening uh, via a podcast dynamic, that we want you to know how important you are to the Spirit of God, Absolutely. because it will change, that it will change in the middle of a program and go a whole nother direction. And sometimes we just know that's just the Lord. Somebody needed that. And um, we, we really want to stay flexible. We want to stay available. And we want to be full of the Spirit of God. Um, the New Testament, all of Paul's teachings, everything that Jesus explained ahead of time that would be happening in the life of, of a believer was going to be that the Spirit of God was going to live in them, right. not only comfort them and lead and guide them, but help them administrate um, their entire being, how we, the thoughts we think, the words we say, what we read. Right. Uh, who we're with, everything that, that in life is supposed to be directed by the inward presence of the Holy Spirit. They didn't have that in the Old Testament. <laughs> no, and, and, and to go back to what you just opened with, that it'll go different directions based on who's listening. Right. That goes back to what I've taught a lot about drawing on the Holy Ghost. Right. You know, uh, I tell congregations all the time and for, for decades. This is important. That, Listen. That you'll get more out of a service right. if you interact. In other words, if you're in a service and somebody's preaching, it, 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 if you just sit there like this, you're going to hear the information. Right. But you'll get more if you interact by saying amen and that's right and, well, that's a good word. We'll praise now, the Lord. Taking notes. Well, and and you're, you're, there's an interaction there because that, 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 it causes you to draw on the gift. Right. Draw on the anointing. And so many ministers that I know, and including me, get off on these rabbit trails. And and <laughs> any minister don't know why they're on these rabbit trails. But, uh, but what's happening is that somebody over here is pulling. Somebody right. over here is drawing. Somebody over here is making a demand. Somebody over right. here needs an answer. Right. So they've been believing God, asking God for an answer. Sure. And then the pastor comes in or the minister comes in and got his notes ready to go. But right. then he's off over on a rabbit trail. Right. Why, I, why am I here? Off over a rabbit Why am I here? And so at the end of the service, the minister may as well walk away shaking his head like, oh, man, that was a mess. I, I just was shotgun today. <laughs> yeah. I was just everywhere. Uh, right. And yet several people just walking out of the auditorium with a smile on their face saying, I got it. I got my answer. 
temperature yeah. where everybody else in the congregation may just walk out and say, that was a, that was a good sermon today. Right. That was a good meeting today. Right. Pastor made some cute little points today. That was a sweet little <laughs> talk pastor made. And yet others are walking out there and say, I got it. I got it. I got it. Because they're, they've learned to make demand right. uh, on the, on not just on the man, but on the office that's in the man or the right. woman, the, right. the the Holy Spirit office, the, yeah. the office the of apostle, calling. the prophet, evangelist, mm-hmm. pastor, so on. And, right. and so, uh, so, you know, when I go to a meeting, you, you very well know this. When I go to a meeting, I'm drawing on, right. on the minister. Right. I mean, I mean, for years, I'd go to Brother Hagin's meetings and I'd, I'd pray for two or three weeks before I'd get there. Lord, I'm going to get something right. that nobody else does. You that's know, we right. just came out of Brother Copeland's meetings a few yes. weeks ago. Uh, a couple of months ago now, I guess. Right. Uh, and, 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 you know, every speaker that got up to speak, whether it was Brother Copeland or whether it was Keith Moore or whether it was Bill Winston. Right. And I sat there and said, I'm going to get something. <laughs> if nobody That's else right. gets anything, I'm going right. to get something. That's and right. I'm pulling or drawing or right. making demand on that office of the Holy Ghost. I'm tagging the Holy Ghost and tag Holy right. Spirit talk to me. Right. And, uh, and, and so uh, that interaction Right. Uh, gets you locked in. It gets you zoned in to where it's just you and the preacher, like, and you've got that interaction. Praise the Lord! Come on, yeah, that's good. That's a good word. Yeah, preach that word. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, that's and and there's that there's that drawing mm-hmm. that causes you to get something right when nobody something else does. People don't get it. The other people get a good word. They get right. a good Bible lesson. Right. But you really have tapped into a stream of the Holy Ghost, and so you get an answer or, a, or an right. instruction or a direction. And so you get counseling, uh, you know, without making an appointment. <laughs> uh, why make an appointment and go to pastor's office when, when you can just ask the Holy Ghost to talk right. to you and the pastor right. will get on a rabbit trail and there's your answer. Well, so and, thank God for drawing. And you've always oh, yes. been one yeah. of the big, biggest drawers and major drawers. You used to say it like this. I mean, I used to come to your and Dean's church to <laughs> preach over all those decades. And you'd say, yeah. Brother Terry, I'm, I'm your biggest cheerleader. I'm yeah. your biggest fan. Yeah. Well, I knew what you meant. You were you were sitting on the front row just, right. just focused. And then, you know, if I'd say something, you'd oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, that's good. I remember one time I said something decades ago. I was preaching there in your church in Corpus yeah. Christi. And I said something, and you just said, Oh God, I love the truth. <laughs> and, and, and it was just, you weren't even aware anybody else was around. It was yeah, just you no, and God. Like, that's right. I got something. I, that's truth. I love truth. Exactly. And so there's that, there's that component of learning how to draw. And if people would do that to their pastor, yes. I mean, every Sunday You'll morning, like church more. <laughs> every Sunday morning when that pastor gets in that pulpit and right. you're sitting there drawing, yeah. he may think he's going this way and he goes this way. Right. And then he right. thinks he's going this way and now he goes that way. And, and, and so, so there's like four or five messages wrapped up into something because people are, are drawing. And That's it's, exactly it's, it's right. Vital. Where, you know, in a non in a non Holy Ghost church, that doesn't That's, happen. Yeah. Or in a Holy Ghost church where the people aren't drawing and don't care, yeah. that doesn't happen. The pastor happen. just preaches his three points in the poem and everybody goes on and says, yeah. that was a cute little word. Praise the Lord. There's no expectancy. Uh-huh. You know, and expectancy. The expectancy has to all, everything has to do with faith. Everything to do with faith. And I, I, there there are so many things that, I, that are attributes of a Holy Ghost filled life that will help you receive supernatural wisdom and insight when it's preached. And so we want you to have that perspective more and more and more so that you understand how the Holy Spirit is trying to move. We started off talking today about how uh, we pray ahead of time uh, and anticipate what we would think we might be talking about. But then as the programs progress and we're in a taping uh, dynamic, like we're here in the Hill Country right now in in, uh, in Texas, and uh, wonderful friends' homes that allow us to come it here in their, nice. in their barn dominium. And uh, we, we look out in the morning and there's horses running around by the back uh, I guess veranda here, and uh, then there's beauty all out here, and the cows, and the and all the wildlife, and the beautiful, uh, just seeing the scenery and and hills back up in there. I mean, we we come we had expecting horses yesterday looking in the window while we were doing <laughs> while, our, we were uh, while, while we were filming, and we were we we come with an expectancy to hear from God for ourselves, so that that we are comforted by. 
I thank the same Holy Spirit comforter that we pray you are too. Amen. And it's an inward, wonderful, occupying power yeah, yeah, yeah. that lives within each of us both to give and to receive. Isn't that wonderful? Because it's, cause it's live and, uh, and in yes. person from the Holy Ghost. I it mean, is. it's hot off the press from heaven to uh, tell and you what you need. That is the most phenomenal thing to me about the, the Christian life is that in the New Testament, we are now carriers. That we have a direct line. Yeah. You know, when we were kids in church, we sang that old song, uh, Jesus on the main line, tell him yeah. what you want, call <laughs> yeah. him up and call him up and tell right, him what you right, want. Right. That's, what, that's what the Holy Ghost does. You can call him up yeah. <laughs> and tell him what you want. And then, and then how he'll, he'll bring it in the right. service without you having to go to the office for counseling. Well, and the beauty of it all, as Terry was saying earlier, is that uh, like Pastor John Osteen would always remind the congregation was that I counsel from behind the pulpit, he would always yes, say. Yes. I counsel from behind this pulpit. he didn't pulpit. counsel privately. No. He had other staff members, my right. father-in-law, one of them. Right. And they would come in there and and he said, I want you to come to church with an expectancy that we're going to counsel you from behind right. this pulpit. Right. He said, I counsel three times a week. Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. And if you'll come for a solid year. You'd always say, give me a year. Give me a year. And in a year's time, your life will be better, and you'll be delivered from a lot of things, and you're going to see your life move up higher in but, every but area of your life. Pastor was such a pastor's pastor. Yeah. You know, he, he just gave such. Such a, a master of the, of yeah. the pulpit. Yeah. He could just you know, the articulate the most simple, practical truth from the Word of God. And I, I wanted to remind everybody today, there, there are times in your life, I'm sure like there has been in mine, that you didn't always just feel like you had the power of God on the inside right. of you, or you were maybe even really discouraged about some things and, and or just grossly, you know, disappointed about how things had turned out in some area of your life. And I've had to go back to the basics every time oh, absolutely. to Foundation. review where I am. In fact, Isaiah and Jeremiah both said the same thing. They And the Lord spoke, speaking through them, he said, go back and find where you left me. Right. Exactly. Go back and find, retrace your steps, it says you know, in one scripture. We've always told people, if you don't know what to do, go back to the last thing you know for a fact God told you to exactly. do. Exactly. And start there. See if you did what God told you to do. God's a good checker <laughs> player. Obedience He's is not going to move point. out of turn, so go back and see if you've, you've moved yet. That's right. Obedience of just doing the simple things, you know? It's like your parents telling telling you as, as a child, uh, you know, go out there and put your bicycle up and put it in the garage for tonight, you know, and, get, and shut the garage door and lock it and blah, 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 you know, and give you instructions. And and then you get busy and you get in the house and you start doing something. Maybe you go even go up and a little child go up and maybe start cleaning their room or something. And, and uh, you know, they'll say, uh, you put your bicycle up. Oh, no, I wanted to clean my room first. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the parents will say, well, that's real good, but you didn't do the one little thing I right. told you to do, right. you know, and the, and the Holy Ghost is much that way with us is if you'll go back and do the little, simple, obedient correction sure. in your life, your soul, your attitude, your treatment of others, all of these things. Um, if you'll go back and check those things by the spirit of God, listen real cl closely in your heart. Then I've gone back and done a, as we've said, sometimes a checkup from the neck up and go back and check maybe some things you, you thought you did or just, you, you know, you just want to say, well, I did them in my head, right, you know, right, right, right. <laughs> but then you I want to encourage, really important. yeah, I want to encourage you to go back and read John 14, 15 and 16 to remind yourself how valuable this is Jesus teaching himself in John 14, 15 and 16 on the Holy Spirit, the coming, uh, I guess, um, sending, releasing the Holy Spirit into the earth to live in the new believer. And it was a transitional uh, dispensational thing that was about to happen. And he's trying to prepare the disciples and, of course, us now 2,000 years later. And then go ahead and read John 14, 15, and 16. But don't quit there. Go on and read John 17, that wonderful prayer Marvelous. that Jesus closes out this teaching with. 
It actually starts like in John 13, the end of 13, and goes on through John 17. And and go back and read it out loud slowly to yourself as though you were the preacher. We talked about some of that. But, you know, when you become the preacher... Well, that's where Jesus says, Father, thy word is truth. Right. Boy, everything revolves around that. It the word of, God around the word of God is truth, absolute truth. Well, when those four chapters, if you do that for yourself you will find out the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Word of God working together. And then Paul comes along over in Corinthians and says that the Word and the Spirit must agree. Oh, absolutely. So Jesus... Well, Brother Hagan always said, you can't just have a Holy Ghost church. Right. And you can't just have a Word church. Right. You've got to have a Holy Ghost Word church. You've got to have the two exactly. together. Exactly. If you're struggling with the Word of God, sitting down and reading the Word of God, I have found from personal experience, this is something the Holy Ghost told me, I guess, 35, 40 years ago. I was struggling one day with just my attitude about things and on, the, on a certain level. And, uh, and I just had a, an impromptu impression from the inside to go read Psalm 119. And, you know, it's the longest psalm in the Bible. It's, what, 173 verses, something like that in there. And it's just so powerful. Every verse, with the exception of about six of them, uh, re refer to the Word of God, the precepts, the commands, the laws, statutes, um, uh, statutes everything. There, there's about 10 or 11 words in there that refer to the actual B-I-B-L-E. And if you'll go read that out loud and, and literally preach it to yourself, you'll notice a tone in your voice changes. You'll notice your mind begins to get a lift. Uh, of expectation, uh, you'll begin to hope will come. Uh, you'll you'll begin to have some joy about your life if you'll go read Psalm one nineteen out loud. As Terry was saying, it will begin to give you your own personal hunger for the Word of God, and then you couple that with reading John. Why don't you just do that this week? Go read Psalm one nineteen for yourself. And then come back over to the New Testament and read John 14, 15, 16, and 7, 17. Put those five chapters together for yourself and preach yourself happy, learning how to have the Spirit and the Word agree together. And it'll do something on the inside of you I bet you've never seen done before or felt or sensed or was aware of what God was trying to do from the inside out in your life. Now, Israel. We, everything with God, Old Testament and New Testament, is about His Word. Right. I don't know why the church misses that. It's no, all right. about his word. Right. You remember that testimony I've told here on the program time and again, and it just changed my life forever when I was right. just uh, 16 years old. And then again at 18 right. years old, whenever God gave me what we had all called today, the word of faith message. Exactly. We didn't call it that then, didn't know anything about it, but God gave it to me. And I preached it in church, got in trouble. They said, shame on you. That's terrible. And then I about died in Panama and I came back and said, maybe that wouldn't, maybe I didn't miss God after all. And I went back and God gave it back to me. But every scripture he gave me, the five basic foundational scriptures mm -hmm. God gave me, mm -hmm. it changed my life and they creased my life. Right. Creased it. That crease is still there. And I've never changed from it since 1968, since I was 18. Thankfully but those five so. scriptures he gave me were every one of them were about his word and what he thinks about his word. Right. <laughs> and, and so it's like that's that's, that's the answer. The and yeah. then when Jesus got in trouble with the devil and then when Jesus got tempted, the devil, first thing he did is said, it is written. Yeah. He went to the word. The value and of so that so Christians insight. today don't understand the value of just stop, hold the phone, time out, go to the word. Right. Go to the word, go to the word, go to the word. But anyway, we're going to Israel. In uh, in uh, and and I think we may have to pick what I wanted to say about Israel maybe next week because we don't have time to do it. But I do have time to say we're going to Israel uh, the last week of November and uh, Thanksgiving week here in America. Uh, but uh, we've got uh, we we've got a hotel reserved in Ashdod. Ashdod's on the coast between uh, Gaza and uh, Tel Aviv. Right. 4,000 years old, old city, seen uh, empires come and go. It mm -hmm. means stronghold, and it has been. And we've got 70 Jewish Jews, Jewish pastors, Israeli pastors, that are begging somebody, please come us. And they begged me, please come teach us the word of mm -hmm. faith. Mm -hmm. These are born-again, spirit-filled pastors. They're born-again pastors, and some of them are spirit-filled. And so uh, we felt led of the Lord to go and do that. 
and uh, also felt like we should treat them the way we do third world pastors, because in third world, I always pay the pastors hotel right. and food. Right. And even though Israel's not third yeah. world, I felt in my spirit, well, you ought to go ahead this time and, and we those, bless those 70 Israel. pastors, let's, yes. let's pay their hotel and their food. My goodness. Which just, just, just the hotel bill alone is going to be $60,000, right. which we've already sent 30000 of that. And we're believing God for the rest to come in. Uh, and, and then not that doesn't count our expenses and the other things we're going to do while we're there. So we're looking at a total budget of about $80,000. Uh, and, and, and so we're just believing for that to come in before we go. But that last week of, of November, we're going to train those 70 hungry That's right. uh, Jewish Israeli pastors in the word of faith. And talk to them about the importance of the word. Right. And they ought to know that being from Israel. I mean, they've had the word forever. Right. You know, that the word came from there. Uh, Jesus was the word, is the word. And so uh, we're going to be doing that. And then we'll go from there back on up to Jerusalem after that meeting's over. We'll be ministering there as well and so on and so forth. And some people have asked if they can go with us. And certainly you're welcome to do it. We're not doing a tour or, or, or yeah, we won't you know, be there long we're enough. not making any, <laughs> any kind of right. plans for anybody. But if you want to go, you're welcome to go. Uh, and uh, and so we'll uh, we'll go and, and, and minister and, and then be there a few days because you and I want to go see a few things ourselves, uh, even though we've been before. But uh, I'm excited about that because they need the word of faith. And then we're also inviting Orthodox Jew ministers to come because I want to get them saved. And very few Christians in America will ever go to Israel and try to get Orthodox Jews mm -hmm. saved. And so we're going to preach Jesus and the blood of Jesus and, and, and salvation. But Israel's a big deal. And people say, oh, Brother Terry, you go to the Holy Land. Well, let me say this right now, just up front. Israel is not the Holy Land. You know, Israel's no more holy than your backyard uh, in your house. If you're a Christian and born again and filled the Holy Ghost, then, then your, your place is as holy as Israel is. So, so people always call it the Holy Land, but it's not the Holy Land. It's the land of the Bible. It's so vitally important because right. it's the land of the Bible, because you can take the Bible, Old Testament and New, and go to Israel and say, Jesus preached here, Paul preached here, uh, Elijah called fire down from heaven here, right. Right. Elijah killed the, the, the 850 Satanists here, <laughs> you know, uh, Jezebel was here and Ahab was meant? there. And, yeah. and it, it's you can walk through that. John the Baptist was arrested here. He had his head cut off here. Jesus right. was baptized in the River Jordan here. You know, and so we it's the land of the Bible. It's right. a history uh, uh, explosion uh, because you walk where Jesus walked. You, you see what Jesus saw, the buildings he saw. Some of them they've uh, they've excavated over the years, and you can go down. And, and so, of course, we're out of time, but so we'll pick this up next week. We got <laughs> so much on the, the word this time, we didn't get to Israel. But, but uh, pray for Israel with us. Believe God for those 70 pastors plus, and uh, that God will do some tremendous things. Well... Always, whatever, wherever you are in the world today, the plan of God for your life is that you are always more, more than, than conquered. God bless you. Now I want to talk to you just a minute about a famous old preacher, a real hero of mine. He's in heaven today, been, been gone for quite a while. But his name was Oswald J. Smith. He loved missions and wanted to be a missionary. That's all the man ever wanted to do is be a missionary, but he couldn't do it. He tried. He went overseas over and over again. And uh, finally, he, God got it across to him to pastor a church in Canada and quit and do missions, but quit trying to go overseas and be a missionary. And so uh, there was a church in Toronto that needed a pastor. When he got there, they said, now, look, we're deep in debt. And we want you to preach Sunday morning, and we want you to preach Sunday night. We want you to mention the debt, talk about the debt, and raise an offering to, to deal with the debt. And so he got up Sunday morning and preached, and he preached on missions to everybody's surprise, and never one time mentioned the debt. They said, why don't you stay over and preach next Sunday? Now listen, we're deep in debt. We want you to take up an offering. We want you to get this debt taken care of. And so he preached Sunday morning on missions, never mentioned the debt. Called an afternoon meeting for 2.30, preached on missions, and never mentioned the debt. Preached Sunday night on missions, never mentioned the debt. For some crazy reason, the board decided to hire him as their pastor. And so he preached for a solid year, never one time mentioned the debt, preached on missions every time. But because they gave to missions and believed in missions, God paid their debt off. So at the end of the year, he got his report from his, his bookkeeper, his CPA, 
in the bookkeeper said, you gave seven times more to missions than you spent here at home. And I want to read you something that he said that I've lived by and I've preached around the world. He said, number one, if I refuse to give anything to missions this year, I practically cast a ballot in favor of the recall of every missionary from the field. Number two, if I give less than I've given before, then I favor a reduction in the forces of missionaries proportionate to my reduced contributions. Number three, if I give the same as I've always given, every year give it the same, then I favor holding the ground already won, but I oppose any forward movement. My song is hold the fort, forgetting that the Lord never intended his army to take refuge in a fort. All his soldiers are commanded to go. And number four, he said, if I increase my offering beyond former years, then I favor an advance, an advanced movement in the conquest of new territory for Christ. And you know, I took that to heart when I was a missionary and all these years I've been in the ministry. I mean, all these years, uh, at the beginning of every year, I tell the Lord, I'm gonna give more this year than I gave last year. I'm gonna give more this year than I gave last year. And we've been able to do that now for over half a century. And God has blessed it and blessed it and blessed it. It's proven. And uh, I invite you to get involved in giving to missions as well. And if you'd consider, prayerfully consider, partnering with Renee and I, partnering with Terry Mize Ministries as we go around the world, then I promise you this, I will pray for you, Renee will pray for you, our staff will pray for you every day, every day, every day. And according to God's word, he will bless you and minister to you and keep his word to you. I believe you'll find missions giving is gonna be your greatest asset and your greatest return on your giving that you've ever had in your life. God bless you. We love you. You're more than conquerors. When I first got out of the Army, I went straight to, the, to Mexico, to the mission fields. And uh, I, I spent time with a missionary named Wayne Myers, still preaching. And I ran into a lifestyle that absolutely pricked my heart, grabbed hold of me. I saw a, a man that was living to give. I mean, he, he was he was living his life on planet Earth with the purpose of blessing somebody, lifting somebody, embracing somebody. And I saw that. I said, ah, this is it. I, this is the I'm, I'm embracing this. And I right there made a vow to God and to myself. And I said, this is how I will live the rest of my life, living to give because it's the very nature of God. So I want to encourage you to hook up with that same lifestyle of giving. I mean, embrace it, living to give. And you can give to your local church, you can give to other ministries. I've partnered with ministries since around the world since I was a teenager. And I tell you, God's blessed me for it. I wouldn't trade it. You can also partner with us. We're always happy to em embrace partners. We pray for them every day. But as long as you hook up with that concept, that lifestyle of God, living to give, then it'll be a blessing to others and it'll certainly be a blessing to you.